सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इन दिस एडिशन ऑफ ग्लोबल प्रिंट डियर व्यूअर आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट द ongoing row between India and Canada over the killing of the pro Khalistan Sikh leader Hardeep Singh Nijjar now we know what's happened over the last week a week week ago Justin Trudeau the Canadian prime minister stood up in his parliament the house of commons and said that agents of the Indian government uh, had had a hand in the killing of this uh, of this person Hardeep Singh Nijjar and uh, uh, since then of course the relationship has hit rock bottom the indian government has vehemently denied uh, this that they had a hand in in any such killing uh, the external affairs minister s j shankar in new york on in at the unga has said there is things um, uh, including talking about how uh, richer countries and powerful nations have double standards uh, and that while they can do what they want uh, other countries are uh, not allowed to have the same Uh, the same say or the same uh, right to the same actions now i'm going to try and dissect what's happened and i'm also going to try and tell you what both countries are doing to try and sort this matter out uh, in a sense hoping that they will move on from this very ugly episode but before i do that i'd like to make an appeal to you please do click on the link and subscribe uh, to the prince youtube channel and pay the sum of money it's a very small amount of money but it's it's on this basis that we are able to continue to carry out the kind of journalism that we have been doing these last several years so i would urge you to subscribe and open your wallets and pay that small sum of money now back to my column global print which i hope you will read on the prince website uh, which is about this uh, row between india and canada as i said over the killing of hardeep singh nijjar now i'm not going into the uh, the background of this a lot of it has already come out but i want to start by saying that in delhi over the last couple of days uh, there has been um, a conclave called by the indian army chief inviting army chiefs from the indo pacific region and guess what the canadian deputy army commander major general peter scott was also here in delhi now you would think that considering both india and china have had this very ugly dispute over the last week or so uh, remember that india uh, had banned all visas for all canadian nationals uh, to who wanted to travel to india so the first thing you would ask is how did major general peter scott <laughs> you know catch that plane to come to delhi well you could answer that uh, he had got his visa earlier but i think the most more logical and credible explanation is that canada as well as india want to compartmentalize this issue at least for the time being and there are several reasons for that the first reason is that india doesn't want to carry this dispute on for longer than necessary first of all the entire world or at least the western world is getting involved the americans have also uh, told india that that they should try and resolve the matter it is believed that joe biden the president himself when he came to india for the g20 spoke about this to prime minister modi uh, the new york times has reported that it was the americans that gave clinching evidence to the canadians uh, who is and the canadians as you know are a, are an old ally of the americans they're part of what is called the five eyes alliance which is a group of five countries uh, who share intelligence amongst them and these five countries are uh, the us canada australia new zealand and the uk so if this is true if these stories are true and they've not been denied remember so if they've not been denied neither by the indians nor by the american government nor by the canadians then there must be something in that there must be some truth in the matter which is that the americans gave the clinching evidence of the killing of hardeep singh nijjar and the alleged within quotes involvement of the of agents of the indian government to the canadians with it. and it is with this information 
that Justin Trudeau spoke in Parliament. Now, um, so here is the first thing, which is that the that India and the U.S. have a really good, uh, growing relationship. We know that. We know that uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi was in the U.S. earlier this year. Biden came to Delhi for the G20 summit. And uh, Joe Biden, again, is coming for the Republic Day celebrations in January 2024. So clearly, there is a, a, a great deal of warmth between the, the two countries, between India and the U.S. But if the U.S., on the other hand, and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also on the margins of the UNGA talked about how uh, that they were supportive of their Canadian uh, ally and hoped that India would resolve this matter. So India does not want to upset the Americans beyond necessary, beyond what is necessary. Of course, at home in India, the, the domestic media has been full of support for the Indian government, including by me, I have written a couple of articles as well saying that the Americans can do what they want, really. I mean, they went into Iraq in 2003, violating UN sanctions. In fact, they didn't. Uh, the, the UN had not talked about any kind of invasion of Iraq. There was absolutely nothing on the ground, but the US manufactured the whole argument of Saddam Hussein having weapons of mass destruction, and they invaded Iraq. Uh, killed him unceremoniously, dumped his body in, in some hole in the ground. And the war that followed uh, not just killed hundreds and thousands of innocent civilians, innocent Iraqis, but it led to all kinds of problems, including the radicalization of a lot of uh, Islamic elements and the formation of uh, radical outfits and radical groups like ISIS. And, and we know what's happened in the last 20 years. I have said this and so have several other Indian journalists that the Americans are a fine one to talk. It's all right if they do what they want to, but dare anybody else even think about contemplating the uh, similar kinds of action. Having said that, the Indian government definitely, the Modi government definitely wants to now tamp down this crisis and they want to move on from this. There is too much at stake in the uh, Indo-US relationship and in, uh, and in India's um, growing importance as a country to reckon with, as a regional power to reckon with, for it to be distracted or for it to be poisoned by something like the accusation against India of, uh, uh, over the killing of this pro-Khalistan Sikh um, leader. The second point is that the Americans also want to uh, to put water or to put uh, sand over this uh, this disagreement. They want, they, they understand that India is far too important an ally in the containment of China and that if, if the Indians are going to get angry or upset or embittered, then it will be much more difficult to take on China in whatever way that they want to. So this gathering of forces that we've seen in the Indo-Pacific these last few years in which India is playing the role of, of a center forward, like a linchpin to this Indo-Pacific strategy, which has been thought up and funded by the Americans. If that crumbles, if the linchpin is so angry and irritated that it wants to opt out, then the whole strategy comes apart. And the uh, Americans realize, and so do the, uh, so do the other Western countries, that India cannot be pushed beyond a point, and that's to the credit of the Modi government. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can say about the nationalist uh, right-wing tendencies of this government, but there's one thing that you have to acknowledge and give it credit for, which is that it's made India uh, into a much more assertive country. Now, you can argue about that, whether that's good or bad. But in this particular instance, uh, certainly the Americans believe that they cannot push the Modi government beyond the point. Uh, and you saw that in the behavior of the external affairs minister at the UNGA uh, just a couple of days ago when he stood at the podium and he said, Namaste from Bharat. Now, he's, of course, playing to the gallery. But... Uh, this whole impression that the Indians, uh, that the Indian government is putting forward, that you cannot push us around. We may not be as rich as you, but we are a large nation and we have the self-respect uh, to go with it. And, uh, and that we will not tolerate the nonsense that you are dishing out to us. So the upshot of this is that both sides want to move on. The Americans, the Canadians and the Indians, that's three sides of the triangle. Uh, and I think it suits the Modi government just fine. 
that they want to uh, pour water over this crisis. There's too much at stake, like I said, for both sides. The other point that I'd like to make is, and which is that one of the reasons why the Americans want to tamp this down is because uh, since 2008, the uh, Indian government, and which means across political parties, the Congress earlier and now the BJP, have bought $20 billion worth of defense equipment of arms and ammunition from the US. Now, that's not a... Uh, a small amount of money. It's not to be sneezed at. So certainly America becoming a big source of uh, defense arms and um, armaments for India. India in this in its act of uh, diversifying its um, its relations, its defense relationships, not putting all its eggs into the Russian basket. And also at the same time, telling the Americans that we want a much better relationship with you. We're willing to buy your uh, defense equipment. And so in this, in these last several years, the Indians have bought $20 billion worth of arms. So I think that's not to be sneezed at. But what's interesting is that India seems to be taking a leaf out of China's book, which is that you increase the stakes in the economic relationship, compartmentalize that, separate it from the political relationship, and um, let both things play out in parallel terms. So interesting days ahead. Meanwhile, of course, Justin Trudeau seems to be putting his foot in, into his mouth yet again. Uh, Vladimir Zelensky, the president of the Ukraine, was in, uh, in Canada um, a few days ago. And in his delegation was this Ukrainian gentleman who was a member of the Nazi SS, of the Nazi stormtroopers during World War II. And he was part of Zelensky's delegation. So guess what? The Speaker of the Canadian Parliament um, called upon him. There was much admiration, much clapping. But when this was called out much later, Justin Trudeau, I think, pre predictably just sort of uh, dusted off his uh, coat and uh, said that it, this was not a good thing, but basically did not take a stand on what happened. Clearly, Justin Trudeau's popularity at home is falling. Uh, since he was elected eight years ago, uh, elections are going to be held uh, only two years later in Canada. 63% of the Canadian population say they do not like their prime minister. So Mr. Trudeau certainly has a lot of thinking to do. And meanwhile, the Indian government has attached the properties of a lot of these pro Khalistan leaders, sending the message again to the world that you cannot take us for granted and that you cannot just say what you want to all the time. I'm going to have to leave it there, dear viewer, but I would like to hear what you think of this video and don't forget to read my column Global Print on the Print's website. Thank you so much for watching.